Now, there's a whole bunch of videos on YouTube, some of which I've linked in the comments below, which can give you some background to writing a literature review. But one question that students always ask is what shape does it actually take? Let's have a quick look at some of the options. A lit review has three basic functions, to locate your own research in a broader field of study, to identify a gap where your research fits, and to critique and evaluate existing studies that have done similar work or investigated a similar field. It's important to remember what kind of content is going into your lit review. You will have identified a particular problem that you want to research, and once you brainstorm the ideas and concepts surrounding that problem, you start searching for literature. The literature refers to academic articles and books, but it can also refer to grey literature like government publications or reports from consultancies and think tanks. Next, you want to annotate and summarise the articles you've found, comparing them to each other, looking for commonalities and points of difference. This is where you do the work of synthesising your research, pulling different ideas and findings together. Synthesis in a literature review also involves evaluation and critique. You need to explain why you are including certain articles in your review, why you think they're relevant, and what you think of their approach to the topic. You need to be critical, not just list off a ton of references. Pat Thompson, who runs the excellent Patter blog, describes an uncritical literature review as the laundry list. She says, the laundry list literature review is when you simply list off summaries of texts roughly grouped together under headings. The laundry list literature review has no critical stance. It offers no evaluation. It's as if all the texts are equally important, or perhaps some are worthy of pulling out for particular commentary, but the reasons why these should be selected and not others are not clear to anyone but the writer. One way Pat Thompson recommends you avoid just listing articles is to do the hands-on hips exercise. This is where you lay out the different pieces of research you've found, review your annotations and summaries, and then put your hands on your hips and judge them. This is your chance to demonstrate your own critical thinking and voice as a researcher. Remember at the start the three functions of a literature review? These can give you a hint about how to structure it. You might want to take a chronological approach, which positions your research at the end of a historically evolving field of research. This means that your lit review tracks a research narrative forward through time. Alternatively, you might look at the classics in your field. This is where you identify the big seminal texts in your area of research and explore how they relate to other literature as well as your own study. A more common approach is to write a thematic literature review, where you identify key themes and ideas that emerge from your research into the field. You would use subheadings to mark out the different turns in your argument. Or you might take a focusing approach, where you start with a big broad theoretical ideas in a field, then gradually narrow the focus to studies that deal with your research approach or context, and then finally zero in on your own contribution. Whichever approach you take, it's important to remember the three core functions of a lit review, locating your research, identifying a gap, and critiquing and evaluating the literature. If you ever want to see an example of a literature review, the best place to look is in one of the articles that you've found. Nearly every academic paper, especially those that report on empirical research, will have a section dedicated to covering the literature. So there you go, Lit Reviews 101.